Hi folks, let's take this chunk of aluminum and try to turn it into this pulley. Uh, this is a job shop job that came in. We'll use the Tormach lathe, we'll use Fusion 360. The cam was actually really easy. We'll show that at the end of the video. Uh, let's go make some chips, folks. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Here's the test piece we cut. OD here is great and that ID was good too. Facing is done. I'm actually posting these all as separate operations because I got some weird tooling going on. I actually had to take the, uh, the drill and the spot drill out. You'll see here in a second. But um, I don't. Uh, I only got one piece of stock, and let's try not to botch it. Now go figure, I thought I had a good recipe down on chip breaking, obviously um, I don't. Although, you know what, I think that feed rate is wrong. Shoot, I'm supposed to be 12 thou for rev, that's my fault. Operator error. Remember how I was just saying we've only got one piece of raw material for this? I should have stopped it when that chip breaker wasn't working and just reposted. I just should have. Good lesson. Um, because look, and this has never happened to me. Um, the chips actually created enough of a uh, displacement that the uh, machine lost steps and um, created a tapered finish there. So that's totally no good. The good news is I think we can fix it. I'm just going to re-zero off of this and then push everything down about a thou. I suspect that this is too shallow, so hopefully that'll all clean this up and we'll be okay. Oh, that's awesome. Dodged a bullet on that one, though. Woo. Flip her around. We've got her flipped and dialed in. Got some shim stock to help protect the surface finish on the boss that we're holding. And then I use this parallel as a spacer because that radius um, would interfere with, unfortunately, holding the part right up against the face of the chuck jaws, which I would have liked. Um, and then I also use the, this um, parallel here to touch off to set that point as my Z0. That way we, because I don't know exactly what this distance is to this scrap stock finish here. So by setting Z0 here in Fusion and on the part makes it easy, hopefully to, should make it easy to get all this trued up correctly. This job is kind of kicking my ass. Um, so that wasn't, setup wasn't good. So I grabbed some height gauge blocks. That way that can space the part off the jaw, leave them on there and I'm using some double-sided tape to hold it on. And then I was having a hell of a time with some stainless shim stock staying around this. So the same thing, I cut a little piece and just used double-sided tape to get that sucker to hold. So that should make this easier here to get this in the part, uh, the part in the chuck and dialed in and square. There we go. She's dialed in on the four jaw. She's running true. Much better.
uh, pretty cool folks. I gotta, gotta say, pretty cool. Um, I think I gotta get a smaller, well I know I gotta get a smaller radius insert because even there we did a pretty good job breaking chips, or better job I should say, but it still um, didn't break the chips on that cleanup pass, so um, no big deal, uh, just on my list of things to do. Beautiful, uh, they turn beautifully though, that makes me happy. One of the things I love about this lathe, when when we're, we're rapiding and not cutting, um, you can just open the door. It'll shut the spindle off, it keeps its position, and that lets amateurs like me come in here and safely clear these chips out for my finishing pass, um, which is really, really nice. I need to go like hang out in a lathe shop with somebody for like a week and learn this, because you know, one step, two step forward, one step back. We've got some of our insert chip breakers down better um, profilers, but boy, that uh, groove porting tool there stunk. I don't like it too, it's funny because it's a good finish, like I'm happy. It's not like you're making bad parts here, but um, it's not safe. Like I just, you know, it's like the wrong thing to do for the next, you know, five years. So I'll learn. Shiny. Awesome. Sorry for the needle gun noise in the background. We got a big fabrication job going on. So one of the things I love about the Tormach lathe is I can run both gang and turret tooling. Uh, today, we're running these all as separate ops, like I said, because sometimes it's really nice to pull tools out here so you don't crash things. That's uh, not a fun way to spend a, an afternoon. So we'll spot here and then we'll come and drill with that eighth inch, uh, half inch drill. And then we'll use the boring bar back here to widen her out to 625 plus some clearance. Uh, I am told the idea behind spot drilling is you want, you need at a minimum, the spot diameter to be bigger than the land or the flat spot on the tip of your drill. Someone want to confirm that for me? We've got to bore this out now. If there's one thing I've learned, it's go slow, take it easy. Uh, we're gonna turn this at only 600 RPMs. Um, it's just, I, I don't know why. I, the only thing I can think of is, you're almost trying to do more of a shearing, like a broachy action, and not like a high speed cutting where, I don't know what it is with us, a harmonics, harmonics or just the surface feet per minute, but slower RPMs for me has seemed to be, do work better. Not hit any cutting just yet because I had taken my test cut to double check the boring bar was cutting on the correct diameter. Obviously before you run the cut, I jog it through Path Pilot to look at the furthest point back to make sure it's not going to crash on the back side of the boring bar. And then you can see here we're running 500 RPMs, 6 thou per rev. Now we're doing some cutting. It's actually silent. I was a couple thou under, so I'm just taking one last pass and I, I took a test cut and I was getting chatter, so we slowed way down, 175 RPMs, um, 4 thou per rev. We'll see how this turns out. I hope the problem here is you don't want to skip over the surface. The worst case, we'll throw the reamer through it. I've got a 629.9 reamer. I'd love for it to be about a thou inside of that though. 
Uh, but you know, the trick here is just go slow. And again, it's more like a scraping action than it is a high cutting action, if you will. Threw a snap ring in it. We were shooting for 629, and I'm just a few tenths over. Um, if you trust tenths on a snap gauge, telescoping gauge, 6295. Awesome, just awesome. However, screwed one thing up, which is I butchered the hell out of that boss with my uh, chuck jaws, and that's embarrassing. Um, I don't know what I could have done better, with the exception of the obvious solution, which would have been to have left some material there and turned it down later. You know, even with those stainless steel shim stock that was 10th now, it's just, it just no good. So any better tips on that? I, I, it won't affect the functionality of the part, but that's pathetic. Who wants to be proud of a part that looks like that? The rest of it, the rest of it I can get behind. That's pretty cool. Uh, all right, let's go. We got to drill and tap a side hole and cut a little key slot here. Broach set. I'm not going to lie. I do not do this very often. Five sixteenths or five eighths hole and three sixteenths broach with the. Let's see, obviously it goes this way. Cool. Got some oil on it. To be honest, I'm not crazy about this press from Harbor Freight because it doesn't push perfectly straight up and down. I'm always worried that it might snap a broach. Um, we're okay here, but boy, I'd love to have a bigger um, Arbor Press, one of those ratchety hand types. Obviously, wear eye protection. My God, that's not already obvious. Oop, out of trouble. Huh. Guess I never thought about that broaching such a long hole, it's causing the broach to um, not broach all the way down here because the arbor isn't long enough, which kind of makes sense. So uh, I guess we'll just push it back out. You're probably not supposed to run a broach backwards. I would probably say don't do this at home. Uh, we'll see what people say in the comments below, but I think that's bad bad broach etiquette. Cool, so she started, put a, keep our broach guide in, and this time we put the shim in, and that just pushes the same broach out a little bit further. I remember the first time I brought a broaching kit and saw that I was like, well, that makes sense. Starts on its own. We've got to drill a quarter 28 set screw hole, and it needs to obviously be perpendicular to our broach slot. So how do we fix that? How about this? Um, I had to flip it around uh, backward so that the pulley cleared, you know, this piece of black here gets in the way. But take a look, just put some parallel risers on here, and that let me put my broach perpendicular to there. And now I can dial it in, and we've got a nice secure way to hold this part and drill our hole. And we're done. There's the uh, set screwed hole in the broached slot. And that's a wrap folks. So some learn, some definitely some good takeaways. I'm really ticked that I screwed up the uh, look of that boss right here. That's just not good. But we, we did, a, I thought nailed the ID on that boring bar, which is pretty tricky. And it's just a really cool looking part. And for me, that's a takeaway. Um, I'm still like consider myself a pretty new lathe guy and if I can do this you could do this That's what's so cool about it We took a piece of, of aluminum and we turned it into this beautiful pulley. So from a job shop standpoint, I underbid it
we, you know, we try to bid $75 an hour, sometimes up to $100 an hour, depending on the risk and the type of work. And I will tell you that this was expensive, in my opinion, and the customer didn't have a problem with that. But reality is we spent more, you know, it's tough. I'd say a full day, but I had a lot of distractions and a couple things I chose to take it a little bit of time on to mitigate the risk that we ruined the part. And um, I was gonna say, Oh, we filmed it, so that takes longer. So maybe I didn't overbid it or underbid it by too much. So with that, folks, take care. See you next Wednesday.